Okay then, gang, so in this lesson, I want to talk a little bit about how Laravel likes to structure applications using something called MVC architecture, which you might have heard of. Now, MVC stands for Model View Controller, and it's a really popular way to structure an application in general, not just Laravel apps. And it basically advocates for splitting your application up into three main modular parts. Models, which represent the data layer of your application views, which are the presentation of your application and what your users ultimately see and interact with in a browser, and controllers, which is kind of the glue between those layers, which contains all the logic needed to handle requests, interact with a model to do something, and return a review as a response. And by splitting the application into these different parts, it allows us to keep the code more clean, modular, more organized, and easier to update or scale in the future. Now, we've already seen models and views in the course so far, and in a way, we've kind of seen what a controller does as well, in that we've handled requests to certain routes within the web routes file by responding with a view which gets sent to the browser. And sometimes we've injected data into the view as well. So these handler functions hooked up to these routes are essentially controller functions. And in our case, the amount of logic in these functions is at the moment very small, but as your application grows, you'll be adding more and more logic within these functions to do things like maybe validate user input, save records to a table using a model, or maybe fetch records from a table according to some criteria. So before long, the functions can get pretty complex and large, and this routes file might end up getting really big and hard to navigate or update especially when you start working with multiple data models and a lot of different routes and tables and stuff. So it would be nicer if we could keep this routes file clean and lean and then relocate the handler functions into a separate file. And that's essentially what we'd be doing if we made a controller. We'd be keeping the routes defined in this file, but we'd be moving the handler functions and the logics within them to a controller file. And we typically have a different controller for each different resource or data model. For example, we have a Ninja model and we'll have a bunch of routes which interact with that model. So we'd make a Ninja controller to handle all the logic for those routes and that model, whether it be to fetch all the Ninjas and return a view with them or to validate user input to save a new record to the Ninjas table. All those handler functions for the Ninja model will live in that Ninja controller. And then in the future, if we have other data models, models we interact with, we'd create another controller for that, which interacts with that data and returns views to the user. So then, that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. We're going to be making a Ninja controller to handle any requests involving the Ninja model. All right then, so the first thing we need to do is make a Ninja controller, and we can do that easily by using Artisan. So open up your terminal, and you want to type PHP Artisan, and again, we're going to use the make command, then a colon, and this time controller to say we want to make a controller file. After that, add a space and we're going to call this Ninja Controller. So this is the naming convention in Laravel. We use the model name followed by the word controller. Okay, so press enter and then hopefully in a second you should have a new controller file generated for you. You're going to find that controller file in the app folder, then in the HTTP folder, and then within that the controllers folder. So, you can see mine right here called ninjacontroller.php and inside that you can see we've got a class called ninjacontroller which extends the controller class. So it's inside this class we define all the handler functions for different routes which concern the ninja model. And those functions generally adhere to a naming convention within Laravel as well. So what we're going to do first is just create all those standard handler functions now using that naming convention. And then as we progress through the series, we'll be fleshing those functions out to add more functionality to the application. Right then, so I'm actually just going to paste in these functions with comments and then I'll walk you through each one. So then the first one is a function called index and we'd use this to handle a get request to just forward slash ninjas in the case of the ninja resource. If it was a different resource, then it would be forward slash and then probably whatever the model was, for example, blogs or vacancies, etc. And inside this index function, we typically fetch all the records for that resource and maybe pass them into a view, an index view, which we then return. All right, so next up, we've got a show function, which takes in an ID variable as an argument. So this handler function is to respond to get requests to forward slash ninjas forward slash ID, where the ID is a route wildcard and represents the ID of a ninja that we want to pass into a view. 
we typically fetch that record inside this function and then pass it into the show view, which we then return. The third one is called create, and that would handle get requests to the path forward slash ninjas forward slash create. And as a response, it would send back the create view, which would normally have a web form on it that a user might fill in. Now, all of these three routes, we've already actually set up in the routes file, and we can see those if we open that file up. So the first one handling a get request to forward slash ninjas, which returns the index view in the ninjas folder, is right here and it passes some ninjas data into that view as well so this function right here would actually be that index function in the controller next we've got the route for a get request to forward slash ninjas forward slash create and that returns the create view and this function would be the create function in the controller then finally we've got a route for a get request to forward slash ninjas forward slash id where the id is a wildcard and currently we return the show view and pass that id into the view itself and this function would be the show function within the controller now obviously in each case we'd have different logic within the functions. For example, in the first one, now we'd instead get a list of all the ninja records from the ninjas table and we'd inject those into the view instead of just using these two dummy ones. And inside the show route, for example, for a single ninja, we'd fetch that ninja from the database table and we'd inject that into the show view. So then, let's for now copy one of these over into the controller file and update it. And then we'll come back to the routes file when we're done and hook the rest of these routes up to the controller as well. So then let's start with this one right here. So this is for the index function to grab all the ninjas and return a view with those ninjas included. So I'm going to grab all of this logic inside here. In fact, I'm not. I'm going to delete this because we don't need to grab the, or rather make up the ninjas anymore. We need to get them from the database. So instead, I'm going to just cut this thing right here and then I'm gonna to go to the controller file. I'll delete this comment right here and I'm gonna paste this in. Now, we no longer need this greeting because we're not using that greeting in the view anymore, but we still need this ninjas thing that we pass into the view, only now we don't have any ninjas, but we can use the model, the ninja model, to grab all the ninjas now and pass them in. So how can we do this? Well, we're gonna create a ninjas variable and we're going to set that equal to ninja, which is the ninja model. I'm going to click on this and it should automatically use that namespace for us. And then on that, we can use that all method to grab all of the ninjas. And now we're returning the view with all of those ninjas inside it. So this is one method we can use to grab them all, but I'm actually going to use a different combination of methods to order the ninjas as well. So right now, if we use the all method, we're not specifying any kind of order to get them in, but we might want to grab the ninjas in the order that they were created. So if a user eventually creates new ones, they're going to be at the top. So instead of this method, I'm going to use a method first of all called order by, and I'm going to pass in a column name, which is created at. Remember, that is automatically created for us and also updated for us when the ninja is created. And then I'm going to specify that I want them in descending order. So new is first. Then this just orders them for us in the query. But then we have to use on that a get method. So let's use that. And now that gets all of the ninja records for us, but in this order right here. And then we're passing those ninjas in order into this view. Awesome. Okay then, so now we just need to hook the routes up inside the route file with these new controller functions so that when requests come into those routes, Laravel knows to fire the appropriate controller function to respond to them. The way we do that is by coming to the routes file and then first of all using the ninja controller namespace. So we say use and then it's app, then a backslash HTTP, then a backslash controllers, and then another backslash, and then finally, ninja controller. All right. So next up, we need to come to where the current handler functions are defined, and we need to replace them with an array instead. And that array contains two values. The first value should be the fully qualified controller class, which is ninja controller, then a double colon, and then class. 
And by the way, when you see something like this, I might have mentioned this before, but when you see something like this, where we have the class name itself, followed by this class afterwards, what that does is essentially get a full namespace path to the class. So this would be the same as writing app backslash HTTP backslash controllers backslash ninja control as a string value. But this way is much easier to read and maintain. Anyway, next we need to reference the function name within this controller that we want to fire when a request to this route comes in, and that is the index function. Okay then, so now we're hooking this first route up to the Ninja controller and the index function within that controller, which then responds to the request. And you can imagine if we do this for each route in the file, it's going to keep the whole thing much cleaner in here and easier to maintain. So then we'll hook up the other routes in the next lesson. But first of all, let's see if this still works in a browser. All right. And now we can see on this home page, we get 50 records, 50 Ninja records all the way down here. So that is definitely working. If we click on one of these, we should see the ID of those records on the show page as well. Cool.